everybody, Stippling Vaughn. You can see I'm at my local dive bar getting some work done. Uh, you can see where I put in the back. I put in 232 in the back now. Uh, I had to draw him a couple times to get him the way I wanted him. And then put him in, actually sh shrunk him down from what I originally had him drawn. Uh, some ways I look at that, I'm like, should I have shrank him a little bit more? But then I was like, no, best is just to have him the way I, how, how I wanted him. That way you can really see the size difference between him and Razor. Because Razor is smaller than 232. So, but I have him, you can see I've got him where he's literally ripping one of the monsters apart. So, and then you can see where I've started with this one that fell down. I'm starting to put the tone in to him. And you can see where what I'm doing is, sorry, how I'm going with very fine dots, okay? I'm thinking about it like as if I was applying, the way I'm doing the dots here is I'm doing acting as if I'm uh, doing zip-a-tone screens. And I'm looking at this as like a 10 or 20%. I think I really need to be thinking where 20% here for this creature. Razor, she's gonna be more like a 30%. And then lastly, uh, 232 back here. He's gonna be mainly a 10% with maybe a 20% of the creature that is ripping apart since it's going to be mainly black. But the whole point of this is that uh, when I'm done is your focus is going to be Razor in the center here with 232 as a backdrop and this basically being like the one that fell. He's basically just a, uh, I guess you could say a, a, a stand. So if this is a bust of her uh, this would be the stand that she'd sit on. So, let's get to work on it. I'm working with my 102 nib, and we're just going in lightly, putting in the dots. And so, just going in, I'm not gonna go heavy. I'm gonna start light, and then as I go in, and as I get the base, creature that fell and rune or not to rune uh, 232 in the background if I have to I will darken her up so she then stands out because she's your main focus of this piece so I didn't get a video posted yesterday uh, didn't make it into the bar actually I couldn't come into the bar we had a Christmas party to go to uh, my girlfriend's uh, part of uh, the local Camaro Club, and so they had their Christmas party. So we went to that. Had to get ready during the day to go, you know, make cookies and that type of stuff. So we got that done. We went to this. So I wasn't able to make a video. Wasn't able to be on uh, Danger Vanessa's show, the chat last night. Uh, I'm going to have to watch it tonight or I'll watch it tomorrow to see what I missed out on. So, but in fact, I didn't even bring my stand with me to hold my phone. So I'm actually doing this, holding the phone while I put the dots in, which anybody who's watched any of my other videos, uh, I started out that way where I'd hold my phone and do all the work so as a result I'm uh, not able to it's more difficult I don't like doing it this way anymore because you have the ability to move your hand around more move the paper around whereas like right now I'm using my hand that's inking to hold the paper in place so um, Shane Last week, he was when he had the closeout stream for Glorious Rex 2. There was a possibility he was not going to have it go another 30 days, but he did. It's still in campaign mode. And I took a look according to what he wrote on his campaign page. 
Uh, the deadline for this is when it goes in demand. So it's not, ha not hasn't gone into demand yet. So as a result, I am still not late. So that's good because I definitely need the time. So I did post a couple uh, when he first was going, hey, if I uh, don't know if I'm going another 30 days, and I'm like, well, just tell me now, should I add 232 or not? <laughs> well, obviously, because it's, I was going to add 232 no matter what. If I ended up that uh, I was disqualified because I didn't get it done in time, so be it. But, I mean, I, I don't do this professionally. I do this. I'm a weekend warrior. I'm a hobbyist. I do this on the weekends. During the week, I have a regular job. So, and I'm like during the week, what I was working on was the image of 232. And, uh, it took a while to really get him drawn the way I wanted him to. It was not that easy for me. So, plus also all of this, I, I'm, it's, I, for me, I have to work from a lot of reference. Uh, so I have to like really work out how the drawing is going to be. Uh, when I don't, it takes a while when I not have reference material to uh, draw from. And that's one of the reasons why I was able to get the monsters done, the, these alien monsters done so easily and rel drawn relatively quickly because of the fact that uh, they're completely made up and really don't have any uh, rules applying to their anatomy and everything. Whereas uh, 232 and Razor. Uh, they are humanoid, so I gotta have the humanoid uh, anatomy there. So, but so that's good that he's got. And I'll tell you something: a lot of I've seen a lot of submission pay, uh, pieces uh, flowing in this week. Shane's been sharing a lot on his uh, on his Twitter feed, and uh, competition again is very stiff. Uh, a lot of people, you can tell those that backed the first book, they're really going in and really putting a lot more into their submission pieces this year as opposed to uh, last year. Uh, it's because we have more, we have a stronger feel from reading the book of what these characters are like. Uh, what the environment in which they live in is right. We have the monsters. A lot of people drew the monsters. Um, one person drew a picture of 232 holding one of the monsters that he's ripped apart, which looks like I have. Uh, Rainy, her cover for Inglorious Rex 2 is uh, somewhat similar to my composition where you have uh, 232 in the foreground doing a power punch to, to one of the alien creatures where Razor is behind him. Uh, mine's reversed where I got Razor in the foreground and him in the background. Uh, she has more separation between the two characters. I have mine done as if these two are fighting back to back and like uh, the way I'm envisioning is that uh, uh, Razor being uh, smaller and uh, more nimble, she's like kind of running through and like doing like not like completely killing them but just like boom 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 hitting them hard and then when that while they're dazed two three two's coming in and he's the one who's just doing the he's the one that's actually like doing the killing and the man and just ripping them to shreds because like like think of it this way she's like running through real quick and nimble kind of like how cheetah was in thundercats real quick and nimble hitting them with her staff to disorient them and then uh 232 is like Lion or Panther, and he's coming through and like stomping on him and just using his sword or his nunchucks to just completely like take their heads off real quick behind her. Uh, so they're working as a team. That's how I'm envisioning it. Instead of uh, where Shane said that uh, it'll start with uh, 232 and Razor fighting each other and then. Uh, they have to go outside the city during the middle of their match to defend the city against these alien creatures. So I think if I look at it, whereas, whereas initially they were fighting each other, now they got to work together as teammates to defend the city. And I kind of see with that where 
uh, because they know, knew each other so much intimately before Alex took over his brother's uh, Rex, that as a result, the two of them out in the field fighting these creatures, they can, they already know what the next person's move is going to be, so they don't have to uh, coordinate and discuss what they're doing. She can just act on almost like an instinct, and then he can just follow up uh, behind her, and they don't need to talk. They just she acts and he acts, and they work in conjunct. Great, they work almost like a like a tag team match or like in tennis when you play doubles. Okay, when you've been around your your teammates so long, you don't need to uh, communicate. Kind of like like football. Remember, I always, whenever uh, the last few videos I've said on Sundays, I'm always saying, go to your local bar, go to your local watering hole, and watch a football game. You might be surrounded by people who don't, who aren't fans of your the team that you're rooting for. But you guys can still have fun together, even though you guys have you have a common alley in football, and you can talk shit, and no one takes it personally. And I think that's where, uh, in comic books, we need more of that. Where we, you think about it, I mean, the really good streams, we don't really try really put people down. We 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 talk about the medium. It's one of the reasons why I like the chat, is the chat relatively avoids drama. And the discussion is focused on crowdfunding Comicscape books. And I can see as the channel grows, it's going to result in discussing other crowdfunding books, not just CG. Now, that all depends on Danger Vanessa. Danger Vanessa, it's her show. She can go whatever direction she wants. Um, she's been made it very clear. She is not going to uh, monetize her channel. She has no intention of ever doing that. And I respect that because she wants it to be uh, pu and pure and organic. She doesn't really do a lot of promotion. Thing. I think uh, me mentioning Danger Vanessa's uh, show uh, each week on my Sunday stippling, uh, I do more to try to promote the show than she does, which if she had a problem with it, I'm sure she'd say something to me. Uh, but I would definitely encourage everybody who's watching to uh, check out the chat. Remember, next week is uh, the auction to support Sean Arnett. Uh, she is, he is a uh, friend with Joe Santa. They have a show together. Sean's currently taking a hiatus because of having to deal with his mother. And now that she has passed, he has medical bills. And uh, the CG community is really coming together once again uh, to uh, show their unity and support for each other by having this fundraiser for Sean. And uh, they are just, it's, it's great to see such support for one another and helping him with his medical, medical, medical bills that were accrued uh, while his mother was in hospice. So, I encourage everybody. The first, it starts off on Joe Sontag's channel. Then it goes to Michael Bancroft's channel. And then lastly, it'll go to, uh, uh, it will go to uh, Jeremy, Lord Crackhead's channel. Uh, it's all on Saturday. It's all on the 10th of December. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing it. And the way they're doing it, it's not like one of those where it's like, uh, the last show is going to have all the big stuff. They're going to have uh, like a high-priced item uh, for each show. So it's going to have a nice... They're, they're coordinating this so they'll have a nice medium. And the way they're doing it is uh, Joe Sontag is setting up a uh, PayPal account just for this. So that way all funds will be going directly to Sean. There's no uh, additional stuff. I would say, I would ask anybody that's going to be taking part in bidding or any of these items, uh, please include an extra $10 in shipping to, uh, that way the people who are taking their gracious amount of time out of their schedule to do these shows and do the streaming, 
um, have the uh, funds to ship this stuff to of what you want. So, so we got the game start in 23 minutes. I want to get back to the working on this hardcore. So remember, uh, I thank you for watching. I hope that you guys will all give it a like, a subscribe and you'll share it out and then of course remember life is stressful just take it all one diet at a time